I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a really fun video that will also um, not only serve a great replay purpose, but also help you guys that are new to the game play Destroyers a little bit better. And these are the keys to success. But before we get in, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support of the channel. Next sub of 4,000, 4,000 subs, we're going to do another premium giveaway. All right, so this is my live reaction here of uh, just playing this game. And let me see how I'm able to manipulate the screen. And you can see I'm playing the gearing as one of the, uh, you know, one of the best destroyers in the game, in my personal opinion. Um, I like it a lot. It is a very, very powerful destroyer. I, I mean, I've haven't seen this destroyer played in a long time, and or I haven't played in a long time. And uh, I wanted to show all the capabilities. A lot of people say you play too many premium ships. It's like, hey, let's play a tech line uh, trip ship. And gearing is actually one of the, you know, lines that I've played. At the very beginning, and it was one of my favorite destroyers when I first grinded out the lines in the tech tree line. It was super, super fun, and I really, really enjoyed it, and uh, super awesome. And and I, it still is to this day, and you can even upgrade it more with the, um, I would say, unique upgrade or legendary upgrade, as I used to call it, where you can make the concealment get down even lower than the 5.9 you currently see in front of you right here. So what do I like about the gearing a lot? Well, the fact that, one, is torpedoes hit with uh, a lot of poor you know, power and hit like a truck. And it, they're really, really awesome. Very kind of stealthily. I mean, they got travel about 65-ish, 70. Not, nothing like, um, you know, Holland torpedoes that go 90, 95 knots. But you got the gearing that really are going about decent speeds of 65 to 70 knots if you build for them. And the detections are, is they can still sneak up on you if you don't really pay attention. So I really do enjoy it. The guns are just standard guns. 127 millimeter, just basic, you know, secondary kind of style, you know, mark whatever, mark eight or guns, whatever for, you know, the, the American side of the, the battleships and the cruisers and, um, you know, the short players for the basics American gun power. And they're awesome. They're, they're just enough to do what they need to do. Notice I'm also running RPF and giving me this first look, first, first kill kind of, um, you know, ability where I'm literally just keeping the guns in a direction where I need them to be so I can get that first shot as soon as I get spotted or they fire. I mean, that's essentially, I'm just waiting for him to fire at me if he out detects me or if I spot him first, fire. Now, the black obviously has very, very good uh, concealment, so I'm not going to mess around with that. He does have a radar and he has smoke, which is kind of that overpower gimmick like that where you can see right there, he's running the radar. So what do I do as a good destroyer player? Run away from it if he's in smoke break that uh, line of uh, sight and after I fired you know my plume goes out and then it all goes back in it goes away knowing your ships and knowing that hey destroyer uh, radar typically is around 7.5 ish Gdansk gets around 9 so knowing those basic ideas of the you know, your enemy's capabilities helps you escape those situations right there notice I didn't pick a battle with them and I hey look as a good destroyer player you, you gotta what go in cap spot kill the D's right well if I can't win that battle that means I egress out of it pick my pick my fights choose my battles wisely and then reassess reevaluate and then enter the cap back in the the um the area again now normally i've seen other destroyer players good destroyer players will back into a cap so they have an egress strategy for me i'm i'm starting to like this kind of quarter speed hug the perimeter and then if i need to egress the area i just turn away egress by doing a 180 out and then uh, leave that area notice the black has departed our area so basically we have this free cap available for us and we're really just hey doing what we're supposed to do as a destroyer player we're basically capping spotting torping doing everything, guarding against the shore, screening for torpedoes, spotting for the enemy, spot, or spotting for our team, that is, the enemy, and really just keeping me being in the front line. Notice I am the most far forward ship right now besides the submarine that gives me that ability to spot and run. So again, see, you're new in all types of mechanics. If you're new to the game, I encourage, again, play Destroyer because it allows you to really De demonstrate all the facets of the game where you're worried about concealment, you're worrying about torpedoing, you're worried about gunboating, you're worried about spotting for ships, you're worrying about mechanics. So you're looking, hey, how do my shell arcs work? What kind of shell should I use? Should I use HE? Should I use AP? Again, my rule of thumb is if you got a nose in guy who's angling, don't use AP. Angling poonannies don't use it, so that means you got to switch to HE, which is what? 
high explosive or in my personal mantra hit everything he hit everything you use that for everything that's angled at you or not angled you get damage right but when you see full broadside something then you can switch to ap and use in that regard now that i've capped bravo what am i supposed to do as a destroyer player now i'm going to reassess and reevaluate where do they need me right this moment notice rpf is showing in that direction the closest target right there and i'm hey i'm spotting them hey i'm talking to my team i'm look i don't even need to read the chat just um holding the control button and clicking on your mini map i'm going hey there's a guy right there the black is in in that direction i need to let your awareness know that there is something there that you need to take care of and there he is black i don't know why he's firing a good destroyer player should not fire without concealment if you know you can win the battle uh, for me i think the mistake the black made is really firing without smoke and any kind of cover and now you're just getting shot at and focus fire from everybody and i'm just kind of firing with my team i'm getting free shots free damage again i'm doing my good destroyer player role i'm killing a destroyer player i'm trying to shoot at him and again, he's backing into a smoke. Good on him. At least he had that smoke, but he shouldn't have fired, I believe, early. And right now, I'm just going to continue sending torpedoes right into that smoke so I can uh, basically, hopefully, get a free torpedo kill, meanwhile not being spotted. Alpha Cap is basically lost. There is no destroyers over there, just the submarine. Not, nobody's supporting anybody right there, and that's that's the downside of that. I'm literally one of two destroyers left, so the other F Schultz is at Charlie. He's handling that side. I'm going to continue pressing and holding this Bravo Cap and allowing myself to hey uh maybe i can maybe rush him i probably my right now my thinking is i've got the numbers i can rush castilla's to my south he's kiting away Zumo, not really a threat in my personal opinion his guns probably won't do too too much and not very good aiming he's probably aiming at somebody else so i think i can win this one-on-one -on -one battle with the black especially since he has low health he doesn't have any heals there i can see him right there he's firing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to rush him and as soon as i get either um, spotted by our close proximity detection again in the game there's a gimmick that says if you enter this particular range you will spot the person regardless of island or smoke or whatever it's just proximity spotting that's what i call it so i'm gonna launch torpedoes give me an extra boost here just in case i i, I lose this battle so right here let's see when do i detect him here's the proximities coming up coming up even if he's in smoke, I can spot him with the proximity. So, rep, there's the proximity detected, and now I'm gonna fire at him. He's kind of caught on guard, and now, and then boom, he's dead, right there. Now I did my roll, and now I pop smoke to break that line of sight with any kind of threat that's shooting at me. So that is that sneak, go in, pop, kill, and then he immediately go undetected right here. So I'm doing my job as a good destroyer player. I'm going in, securing the cap. I'm spotting other enemies. I'm also taking down their destroyer, so it eliminates their um, threat off the map. I took out one of their destroyers. Now I'm going to egress the area because I don't want to play with anybody in this area too, too close. That's the beautiful thing about the gearing. The concealment is very, very effective, very good. 5.9, one of the best in the game. Shimakaze obviously has way, way, way better, so you can get down to, what, 5.6-ish, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's pretty low, so it's pretty good there. And look, here I'm doing another good job as a short player. I'm torping the enemy. So, again, all facets of gameplay as a destroyer player and if you want to get better i encourage you to practice it it allows you to you know torpedo from concealment and you can spot and get in smoke and start using warship. guns to farm again that's the last resort they're using your guns my personal opinion or the guns are used for killing destroyer players so i really really enjoy the gearing kind of style of gameplay and the downside is you don't have much health and no heals to figure out or to forgive those mistakes so the other positive sides of the gearing is long long range torpedoes 16 and a half long long duration of smoke notice that the timer is showing up i got about a minute and 23 seconds i mean they almost last almost two minutes i think for the gearing um, very very good for effective in clan battles and rank because you're smoking up the entire team it's like a massive wall of smoke uh very very effective very strong useful for game team or team gameplay so right now what are we doing really I just kind of just hanging out in the front spotting for the team i'm calling for shots i'm out there being that forward observation post that forward observer and going hey guys there's a castilla right there shoot this guy he's full broadside i don't know how this castilla player is still alive this long and there's still everybody's shooting at him i hope everybody's shooting at him look somebody took a shot at him Ooh, nice hit I and mean, he's angled so perfect again that's what the power of angling can do for you guys if you guys want to learn about angling and just watch on these players and just notice how they're angled how it deflects all these shells but you're also a slim profile so it's harder to hit so practice around that learn about any angling also know what kind of shells to use when someone's angled and also learn how to fire that's another good aspect of how to play right now what are we doing as a short player again just continuously spotting and kind of just slow rolling it 
checking out the, the area, looking around, scoping out that RPF indicator switched over here. So it looks like to my west, it looks like I am there is some closer target there. So I got to keep my eyes up and uh, be aware of that. There was another thing a lot, a lot of players I've noticed did not um, know, but uh, the free look, if you don't understand what that is, hold down the right mouse button unless you've changed it. But holding down the right mouse button allows you to free look around without moving your gun. So that way you can survey the battlefield. And again, I see a lot of players not using this ability. Like there, free look right here. I'm looking around, I'm looking around, and right click hold, you can look around and don't turn the guns, keep the guns facing into a direction you want. Also use the mini map to also provide a lot of situational awareness so that you're always, uh, your head on a swivel, keeping your heads up, keeping your you know, toes ready to go, ready to move, and that, that is something I think a lot of players just really don't worry about. And they're always forgetting that you have a mini map and free look so you can keep your situational awareness of, of the battlefield around. So you're always looking, like for example, the Satsuma, if he had you know zoomed out, take a look at, hey, torpedoes are coming away, maybe he's got a little bit more situational awareness, but unfortunately these torpedoes are too stealthy for him. I mean, moving a, a battleship out of this thing is really, really difficult, but he gets slapped right there, ready to go Prussian. Looks like we're kind of still losing this game. I mean, we're losing by, what, we have, they have 427 points to the 667. So, really, it's uh, anybody's game at this point. So, we're kind of waiting to see what's going to happen right here. So, right now, we're still kind of an even fight and we're trying to see what is going on right here for the battle right now we're going to focus in on the azuma he's probably the closest target again I, I don't know where the other two destroyer players are or the submarine so i gotta make sure i keep my head on the swivel make sure that i don't get spotted right off the bat that's why rpf is a very very good indicator so i'm not just blindsided by some kind of threat and that's why i like this indicator it tells me a lot it gives me a lot of situational awareness i know that that rpf is pointing in that smoke which means there's probably a destroyer player right there so i'm gonna just you know slow my roll be patient fire some torpedoes into that area and just kind of give aerial denial don't let them push in notice we've got charlie cat being taken look on the mini map right there that means we're losing a cap which means we got to run back and uh help them out potentially you their submarine goes down so that's a good thing one less submarine to worry about we got still got two um destroyer players in the game that's my primary concern i'm, I'm thinking where are these destroyer players uh what can i do to mitigate that and I just got to make sure I don't get, you know, uh, spotted or really just ambushed by them. So I got to be very, very careful. Let's see these torpedoes. Hopefully they're getting uh, a good lucky hit right here. Do I get a free hit? Nope. Shimakaze is taking on the Victoria. Ooh, there it is. Lucky hit. Two hits right there. That did a lot of damage. So hopefully that wins the game for me right there. Hopefully I can take on this uh, destroyer one on one because he took so much uh, health off of him. And let's see, what's this Azuma? Oh, maybe they hit the Azuma. Yeah, maybe that was it. Ooh, oh, these look juicy right here. Juicy broadside and boom, he goes down. That is splash two. Gearing is, or sorry, the gearing takes out the Izumo right there, and we have ourselves a game, ladies and gentlemen. So we're still losing 459 to 737, but wait on, hold on. There's still a chance. I know most people would say, oh, we've lost this game. We don't have any caps. They got more ships. We've lost this game, right? Never, ever give up in World of Warships, especially in randoms, where anything goes, people can do all types of crazy, stupid things, and you never know when that lucky hit or lucky shot can just all of a sudden devastate an entire team. Castilla, for goodness sake, someone please kill him. He's still kiting away and being very, very annoying. I was thinking about shooting this Navarine uh, with some long-range torpedoes, but the odds of getting him slow behind that mountain, probably not. I don't know. Um, I'm thinking about saving him for this Montana or maybe this Zao. Maybe I can get the Zhao out. Let's see here. He's pushing forward. The green circle above Zhao means that he's got the gas on the, his foot on the pedal. It means he's going forward. I like this Aslan mod. I just downloaded it. It gives me a lot of situational awareness about the time, how much is left in the game. And I'm not sure why the timer's not working on this replay. It probably doesn't work on the replay. Ooh, he gets slapped by Prussian right there. And totally devastated. And now, since I, I just, you know what? I don't have a Zao worried about. No cruiser to shoot at me. So I'm just going to basically fire at Montana. He's got the red circle means he just stays uh, in reverse right now. So that's a good thing. So I'm going to aim just further back. Again, notice I'm not shooting AP. Why? Because it was probably get deflected. He's angled in, right? Angling Poonanny. So I'm just going to basically shoot the HE, hit everything kind of shell. So I'm just going to shoot at the superstructure. Hopefully I can land it. And look, I'm doing some kind of damage. 297 each. And I can even start fires with HE. Look, 1100 damage on a battleship. So guns are nothing to gawk at. They are something that are very, very viable if you use them in the correct manner. And of course, you also have the smoke if you want to farm from smoke and break that line of detection. 
I've got to also as a good destroyer player to get in that situation. Oh, here we go. Here's a good, a good roll of me. My role now is to eliminate this Shimakaze player, kill the other destroyer, so my battleship is protected. I don't want my Prussian taking any more torpedoes or unnecessary damage. So let's get this Shimakaze player out of the game. You notice the arcs of the gearing are very, very arky, very wonky, so you got to lead a little bit better and just walk the guns up, and boom, there we go. Splash three. Another player goes down right there for splash four. And now we all we have left is Montana over here, and we actually might have ourselves a game, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a look at this. Notice the shells are doing just enough damage, and there we go. Prussian takes out Montana, and we have ourselves a ball game. We are now four versus three. Again, what did I say? Never, ever, ever give up, but now we have to take the caps and make sure that uh, this game is sealed uh, for us. But again, we have to make sure we take the caps. Notice that it, they could win and literally, um, I believe it was like a minute or so left. But man, what a comeback here. And all we have left, RPF is showing there is something being detected to the right. And uh, pretty much this, yep, it's the Castilla. He is coming back. Okay, here he is, low health Castilla. Let's do, go ahead and take a chance with that. 20,000 health. You, you gotta pick your battles. No when to you know, shoot and do this, but I'm desperate right here. We need a kill for the win. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the fire and let's see if a DD player can take out a cruiser. We lose our gun, so I'm gonna go ahead. I need that firepower, so I'm gonna go ahead and hopefully pop my damage. Do I need to pop my, oh, I'm saving it for there in case I get a fire and bam, there it is, splash four. Taken down, I pop the damage con and there it is, ladies and gentlemen. That is how we secure four kill game with four minutes left. Can we win this? And uh, we're gonna go ahead and speed up the game here a little bit. I don't want to bore you. I think the rest of the game, this guy literally just, you know, races off in, into nothingness. Let's see. Where is the last play? Oh, there's still a destroyer left. I think I have where, I know where he's at right there. Nothing spotting him right there. We're going to cap. And we just send out some nice uh, potential torpedoes. And I don't know where this guy's at. I can think the Napoli's over here. Yep. Colin goes down over at Charlie. That was where he was. Okay. That's pretty much the game right there, the gentlemen. So I'll just speed forward, and that pretty much ends the game right there. But way to go, guys. That was an awesome game. The power of the gearing. I mean, four kills from a destroyer. That is tough to get sometimes, a Kraken, if, if not, you know. But, man, we did our work to get this thing going, and we just secured that win right there. Way to go, team. Totally, totally awesome. And uh, that's it. I mean, the team, I mean, 600, I mean, sorry, 1,300, 87 damage. 87,000 damage, not bad. And number one in the team, of course, we had to do a lot, a lot of work to get this win. And top four players, obviously, getting achievements right there. Way to go, players. All commented, all uh, rewarded right there. And, uh, yeah, look at the damage. I mean, 80, 27 with the main battery, but a lot with it came from the 57,000 of the torpedo damage right there. But um, I'll take a snapshot and show you the build at the end of the video of what I built. I built it for more of detection and torpedoes, fast reload on the torpedoes, and good detection. Um, I'm sorry, and best detection, of course, concealment as well as the RPF to know where the uh, other players are at. It gives me a lot of situation awareness so I can go on those torpedo runs and, uh, you know, sneak up on destroyers. But hope you enjoy that game. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And as always, hope you're doing well. Make sure you, make sure you say hi out there and uh, when you see me. And let's make this place a better community. And as always, stay safe. And we'll see you soon. Cheers.